Roping cattle in competition is a popular way of spending Sunday afternoons in southern Texas. But roping is also a serious craft which these men and women practice daily in their working lives. And no one seems too young to learn. Some of these Texans have Spanish sounding names like Santa Maria, Muro and Garcia. And others have more familiar names like Fagan, O'Connor and O'Brien, the descendants of Irish settlers who arrived in Texas just 160 years ago and did well. Their ancestors came mostly from County Wexford, where the majority of people were smallholders, cottiers and farm labourers. When they decided to leave, the economic situation in Ireland was dismal. The average total income of smallholders was about £10. The political situation, too, was difficult. Many of the people would have had fathers and uncles killed in the rebellion of 98. The church and priest's house at Ballygarrett had been burnt down a year later. In June 1831, 18 people were shot by yeomanry in nearby Bunclody when they objected to the seizure of their cattle for non-payment of tithe. This was the situation in 1833 when James Power came back to his family home here in Ballygarrett after 20 years in the Americas. He brought permission from the Mexican government to settle a number of families of the Roman Catholic and Apostolic religion near the old mission of Our Lady of Refuge in South Texas. Mexico looked for Catholic colonists to try and retain control of the former Spanish possessions in North America which the then largely Protestant United States was looking for excuses to annex. A person asked me one time, when did your family come to the United States? And I told them we never came to the United States. They really didn't want us. But Mexico welcomed us because they wanted people to colonize the land below the border. So that was wonderful. And my uh, great-grandfather was sent over here as a 15-year-old boy. And I guess maybe hard times in the old country made them anxious to be successful and so they worked very hard. Very well. Mrs. O'Connor Sorensen's Irish ancestor, Thomas O'Connor, was a nephew of James Power. Thomas came from this farm near Ballygarrett, where his relatives still live and farm the same land. Okay, now. They originally came from the house from here. This is the homestead of the O'Connors and in the early 1800s, uh, Thomas O'Connor went from here. And uh, he was a very young man at the time, possibly maybe only in his maybe late teens, if he was that. Some 350 people finally signed up to travel to Texas. Power promised vast acreages of land to prospective colonists nearly 200 acres for tillage and four and a half thousand acres for raising cattle. To people who rented small holdings of less than 20 acres in Ireland, these expanses must have seemed like El Dorado. The families first had to travel to Liverpool, where they spent Christmas Day, 1833. Power chartered two of the largest ships he could find. One left for New Orleans on December the 29th, the other six weeks later. It was a hazardous journey, but when they left Liverpool, they started out to sea in, on Christmas Eve in 1834 and then had to go back to shore. And uh, then they came again, and some of them went on ahead and landed in New Orleans. While they were in New Orleans, somebody went on board, um, on land, and came back with the cholera. And a lot of the colonists died en route, and so they lost many of them on the way. And my great-grandfather came in Copano Bay on a 
schooner, I guess you would say. And for some reason, the schooner ahead of them, plus the one they were on, wrecked up on sandbars in the Copano Bay. And we never knew, but in Father Oberstee's book, there was some question that maybe these sea captains had deliberately wrecked the ships for insurance purposes. So they had a difficult time. Although the colonists survived the shipwreck here at San Jose Island, they were forced to remain on the island for several weeks in quarantine because of the cholera they brought with them. Many died and were buried in the sand. It seems that in the end, less than half the party survived to make their way to the center of their new settlement, the old Spanish mission of Our Lady of Refuge. by Spanish friars in 1821, the mission became the responsibility of a Mexican diocese. By coincidence, the first diocesan priest to say mass here was a Father Henry Doyle from Wexford, who arrived in 1830 and repaired the church. Many Irish priests have served here since, like Monsignor Hugh Clark, the present parish priest. Spanish colonization in North America was based on setting up mission centers for the conversion of the Native Americans to Christianity. The old mission building, the colonists knew, is now being excavated. European settlement outside the missions was always sparse. There never was the flood of colonists hungry for land like that which poured into the United States. The purpose of our investigations are to try to uh determine what size the Spanish mission was that was built in 1795 and what type of construction it was. Uh, the reason is that the city of Refugio and the Refugio County Historical Commission are planning to build a life-size replica of the mission and they want to know as much information as we can get for them about how it was built so that they can do a proper job of reconstructing it. Colonists first arrived, James Power sent John Dunn and Mardike Cullen to San Antonio to arrange for the distribution of land. Each family got four and a half thousand acres and a plot in the town which was then being surveyed and laid out. The town proper was to consist of 49 blocks with the Plaza de la Constitución in the center. I checked on him to see what was the matter and he had a four foot rattlesnake hung on him. It would get up about 18 inches off the ground, half the snake in the air, but it couldn't drag the The Fagan family is typical of a number of the original settler families who still ranch the land originally granted to them by the Mexican government. And, uh, Fagans are very much aware and proud of their family history and anxious to preserve what they can of it. Yeah. This is a scrapbook and a family history book that I have put together. Well, I have a copy of the original grant of the town lot signed by Nicholas Fagan, and it's recorded in the courthouse in a book called Libro Bracero. That's it. They, they came not only for adventure, but for a better way of life. They cut logs down below the hill there and drew them up to the home site with oxen. And they built a, a home there with a chapel in the top and a place for the priest and uh, they had a, an old bell which they hung in the chapel and they would ring it and everybody on the river that could hear it came to services when they had a priest. So Thomas O'Connor, after some time he'd been out there, my great-grandmother, in our letter out to him anyway, she reminded him about his religious duties and going to mass and the sacraments and all, not falling away from him. So certainly in the next letter they came home from America anyway he said, you made mention of my religious duties and was I living up to my religious affairs. So he says, well, he says, where I live, my nearest neighbour is 20 miles away. The nearest village is 100 miles away. The nearest city is 150 miles away. If you get mass once in 12 or 13 years, how you count yourself lucky? <laughs> <laughs> 